Hi guys, good morning. It's so nice to see such a great turnout for this inaugural conference, um, greatly needed in the springs. I want to thank September, I don't know if she's back there, for um, and your crew for arduous work and hours and hours of organizing, but also for sharing their passion to help couples who are struggling to create a family. So whether you're here to seek knowledge so you can take control of your own fertility, or whether you're just here to support someone during their journey, or um, if you just feel like you're kind of alone out there and you want to be with your homies, so welcome. So in Chinese medicine, we think that um, the world we live in and our bodies are based on nature. And what we know about Chinese medicine is that they've watched people for many, many years. What happens in the winter with our health? What happens in the summer when we get too hot? So that's that whole yin-yang thing, and I think you guys are a little familiar with yin-yang, because um, I want to kind of focus on how we can help you rather than teach TCM 101. But it's basically ever-changing and ever-balancing. And I was listening to a podcast one time, and um, the interview asked this man, oh my God, how do you do it? You have a business, you go with um, um, the Tour of France, Tour de France, you cook food for them. You have your own business, you're a cyclist yourself. How do you do it? How do you, you know, balance it all? And he said, how does a guy with a unicycle stay balanced? Right? He said, you're never balanced. You're always leaning right or left and adapting and changing directions to be able to stay upright. So that's how Chinese medicine, it gives me goosebumps. <laughs> that's how in Chinese medicine we say, how is our body adapting? Are you making the right decisions? Are you treating your body with um, um, love and those kinds of things? So very important. My first slide is gonna be, if you don't remember anything <laughs> today, this is, this is the slide to remember because I'm gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna compare how planting a garden and taking care of your own body and, and how that correlates. How many of you guys are planting a garden this time of year? Right, okay. So what's the first thing you're gonna do? Are you gonna go to the dollar store and buy four-year-old seeds? Probably not. You're gonna go to a nursery. You're gonna get good quality seeds. So there's the sperm and there's the egg. High quality in a great environment. Then you're probably gonna pick up a nice bag of soil with peat moss so it's moist and, and lush, right? For your precious little seeds, your little rock stars, and you're gonna plant them. And then you'll probably pick up a little bit of fertilizer so that you can support your little rock stars nutritiously, right? And you wanna have some sun. You wanna have a little bit of sun in your garden because that's gonna create the warmth. And that warmth is gonna help that little seed germinate. In Chinese medicine, we say sometimes with cold uterus is the problem with, with um, getting pregnant. And those are the cases I see where it's like unexplained fertility. In Chinese medicine, we have a way to sort of investigate it, put my Sherlock, hat Holmes on, uh, Sherlock Holmes hat on and investigate what's really going on. And then you want to have some shade because if your garden is too hot, too much sun is going to get scorched. Right? And so it has to have a little bit of sun, a little bit of shade. That's that yin-yang balance, right? It's never all sun, never all shade. You need some of both. And then you need rain, right? And it can't be a lot of rain or all your little precious rock stars would be washed right out of your garden, right? So it's gotta be a nice gentle rain. You wouldn't take your old soapy dish pan and say, oh, I'm gonna recycle my water and I'm gonna water my little rock stars, right? Because those are chemicals. And this is what's gonna happen. So you have the warmth of the sun, just the right amount of moisture, just the right amount of shade, a um, little bit of fertilizer, and your little rock star seeds, okay? Uh, so this is just kind of what I'm gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about the science and nature. Um, Dr. Mag's science uh, part was really informative, I hope for, both, for all of you. Um, a little bit about me talking very shortly about the ABORN, which is the specialty board um, on acupuncturists who work in conjunction with reproductive endocrinologists. Why choose us for your fertility needs? A little bit of science behind acupuncture because there are a lot of scientific research now showing the mechanism of, of actions. 
back in you know the ancients would treat people would come in with back pain and they put the needles in and the back pain would go away they why, why do I need to do research right it's very scientifically driven now and reproductive endos like the research part um, we're going to take a little bit of a, cl a closer look at your menstrual cycle and what might be happening and then men you're going to be on the spot and I have one bedroom question so I hope you have the answer um, how can you strive for the golden egg? That's great. Um, pre preconception care, as Dr. Uh, Meg talked about it, talked, maybe you didn't, but um, men are constantly producing sperm, but women, it takes three months. So your little oocyte that's sort of coming through that cycle right now will not be ovulated until three months. And so it's important for me to know as an acupuncturist the bi your biology because I can better um, control what my goal is for you. Food for thought, and then my favorite part is just showing you some of our miracle baby stories. So I'm, um, I started out in Western medicine. Uh, I was a rad tech for 20 years, and uh, as when I was raising my family, I became a Lalaise League leader, and I also lived in Nova Scotia, Canada at the time, and I sat on the Prepared Childbirth Association of Nova Scotia. So I always had a passion for babies, right? Um, and um, I've been a competitive triathlete since 1987. And personal experience, what got me into acupuncture, I became very sick. Went from competing in five Olympic distance triathlons one summer to not being able to walk up my steps to my bedroom. I had one eye bulging out, thyroid, long story. And I gave Western medicine a year and a half. and. All my blood labs came back after they, they put me on all this medication. I had my labs rechecked every six months. And then after a year and a half, they said, oh, your labs are fine, right? Your thyroid's under control, your liver enzymes are okay. And I'm like, I'm not fine. If I ran, I got this huge rash, it was horrible. So a friend of mine discovered an acupuncturist. And so I began seeing an acupuncturist. Within a year and a half, I was off all the medications and I was back racing. So I decided to have a career change. I sold my house and uh, moved. Uh, was, I was still a US citizen. Came back to Santa Fe, New Mexico and went to school. I uh, got my Doctor of Oriental Medicine degree there and then I studied in China for a few months after that. <clears throat> Started East Winds in 1995. Mm. I'm a fellow of the American Board of Oriental Reproductive Medicine. I'll talk a little bit about that. I um, sat on the governing board for 13 years, and I'm a grandmother of three adorable children, grandbabies. This is me. Um, I raced in a world championship in South Africa in September, so it's kind of fun. So this specialty board was designed to test for competency in both Eastern and Western medicine. So again, it's focused on, as an acupuncturist, I need to know what the reproductive endocrinologists are doing because I don't want to harm anything or impede anything that he's trying to do. My job is to enhance what the, the physician is trying to um, create in that woman's body. And I'm the only um, board certified south of Denver. There's now about, what, 450 people all over the world who are on this board and, and certified. So the other cool thing is we're published. Dr. Meg talked a little bit about that. Um, we've presented all over the world. You saw that. We were in Abu Dhabi. Um, we also were asked to write a chapter in this book. And what's really cool about this is now that reproductive endocrinologists are gonna be coming through their schooling, they're gonna read this whole chapter on acupuncture. So it's not that airy-fairy, walk down the dark street, go into this little smoky building, bugs on the shelf, right? It's gonna be, wow, this is scientifically proven. And I think that's key. So I'm not much of a bragger, so I'm just gonna call it this is my brag my brag slide. So I created the fertility protocol which is used around the world. Dr. Meg talked about that. Um, I've had 25 years of experience in traditional Chinese medicine. Um, I set up an integrated program, program to augment high-tech fertility treatments and this is basically what we found fewer mis miscarriages, fewer ectopics, um, more pregnancies and fewer multiple pregnancies. Um, and more take-home babies. And short story is when, when Dr. Meg and I first broke out the research, I was a little disappointed in the fact that we didn't have higher percent pregnancy rates because there had been a study that said 14% and ours was, ours was like maybe 14. 
Not that I'm competitive. <laughs> and so I was out running one day and I went, oh, wow, I'm really disappointed. And then I thought, what about the babies? Because every research paper out there was on pregnancies, pregnancies, pregnancies. My goal is not to get to the start line of a race. My goal is to get to the finish line, which for you guys is a baby. And when we broke out that data, it was huge, like over the top. Um, this was uh, an award that I just won recently for integrative medicine and research. And, um, and um, the other one I think was in 2014. So done bragging. <clears throat> okay, so everybody knows you've seen this. Uh, figure, he's out on my table. And so it looks like the meridians are kind of on the outside of the body, right? <clears throat> well, it turns out that what happens is, is there a pointer here? Yeah, the green button. Got it. So it turns out <clears throat> that these meridians are not just superficial. If you look at this spider web here, this is kind of what happens. So the meridians all connect on the inside of the body, it connects to the stomach, the spleen, the liver, the gallbladder, and they all work in concert with each other. They each support each other. If there's something that's blocking it, sort of like you know those runners that are doing the baton pass, well, if one of those runners drops the baton, there's a big pile, right? So it's not communicating. So if you look at the spider web, if I take my hand and fingers and just take the very tip of that spider web and I pull on it, what's gonna happen? vibration through the whole spider web. I can't touch any part of that without it being uh, affecting the rest of the web. What happens if a big old bug flies through the middle of this and just basically puts a big hole in it? When I, tip, when I pull on the tip of that, there's nothing, there's no, no communication. So that's key, okay? And this is actually, <clears throat> Um, one of the things we know about acupuncture is it works with the hypothalamic pituitary ovarian axis, and it's that feedback back loop. It's that connection that's so important. And many studies are done with acupuncture in improving that, that um, feedback loop. So this is just a picture of what happens when a needle goes through the skin, and Western medicine has um, determined that the acupuncture points are near nerve bundles. Um, they actually can do curling photographer where they watch what happens when they put the needle through the skin is the fibers of that nerve bundle wraps around the needle, the metal needle, sends a message up to the spinal column, to the base of the brain to make changes. We have, each acupuncture point has energetics. So we can tell the body, like reprogramming our, reprogramming our computer, do this, create more blood, help digestion, help sleep, HPO, so again it has that cascade effect. So based on what we know about the effects of acupuncture, the needle connecting with your brain is reduces stress, regulates uh, cortisone and prolactin, and I'm gonna show you a brief um, demonstration of that. Regulates your menstrual cycle, <clears throat> should be 28 to 30 days, with 13 or 14 days of that follicular phase and then another uh, 14 days of luteal phase. It ensures that ample blood, again, acupuncture is great for um, enhancing circulation. We want to make sure that the hormones are getting to your, your ovaries where they need to be. Um, prepare the uterus for implantation. There's lots of studies that acupuncture can help with implantation. Um, creates a better environment for your eggs and then enhances um, the homeostasis, which is basically what, what I was saying is like balancing and uh, finding a way to adapt. Very quickly, this is the um, study that we got published and we looked at cortisol and prolactin levels. And so as you can see here, the lavender is the IVF group alone, right? <clears throat> and the blue is acupuncture plus IVF. And what you see is about the seventh treatment, and this is important and key because acupuncture is dose sensitive, right? You can't just have one or two acupuncture treatments because it's not gonna be enough time to make a difference. <clears throat> and what you can see here is that about the seventh treatment, the patients had higher cortisol levels, right? Whereas the IVF alone, it was being, it dropped down. And it turns out that during this ovulation time, which is the, um, a more fertile cycle, the cortisol is high. 
we always thought cortisol was calmed with acupuncture. But that's not homeostasis. What we know is that when you ovulate, that's a very active, young thing. It has, that egg has to come out, and it's got to do its thing. Corpus luteum puts out progesterone to support any implantation. And so what we found was, with acupuncture and IVF, it put the woman's environment in a more fertile state. And again, this is the same thing just with, uh, we studied prolactin. <clears throat> So again, here's the HPO axis, and as you can see, everything has to talk to each other, right? That's the communication. And this is just a simple, <clears throat> this is your period, then you have this hormone shift, and then you have your luteal phase here where the uterine wall lining gets built and implantation happens. So <clears throat> this is an example of the five elements. Have you, who's heard of wood, fire, earth, metal, and water? The five elements, right, okay. So this is just a simple, demonstration, wood, fire, earth, metal, water. So wood supports fire, right? Wood supports fire, we can start wood on, on fire, in a, right? And then fire supports earth, right? You burn whatever happens, the trees fall, come down and, and they, are, they integrate with the, with the soil. So they're um, supporting factors. So we look at your body that way and we make sure that they're all communicating and supporting each other. Okay, so let's look at really what's going on down there. <clears throat> so you see, here's your little oocyte, your little egg, and it's, it's, it's pretty small. And during that follicular phase, it gets lots of blood, lots of yin, which would be the estrogen part, right? And it starts to, de to develop. And then once it's mature, it's um, expelled. And you have to look that up online, look at somebody ovulating, because we always thought it was this really explosive thing that happens, and it actually happens very slowly over about 20 minutes. So after ovulation then, that little corpus luteum puts out some progesterone, and then you should have a beautiful uterine wall lining for implantation. And here's that, the wall lining getting thick. This um, is a slide of uh, the herbal, herbals that I use for fertility. And this gal has collected thousands of basal body temperature charts. I like to call them thermal rhythm charts. And so she's taken all those and she's done um, algorithms on them. And what she discovered was during the follicular phase, the optimal temperature of your body should be 97.2 to 4. After ovulation, it should rise about 1 degree. Why is that important? Because if you don't have a long enough follicular phase, how is that little oocyte going to be nourished? That would be like somebody putting a plate of food down me, lots of food, but it, I couldn't eat it. it was, they, they took it away too quickly. <clears throat> so you can see that this is really short, then ovulation happens, and look at how long this luteal phase is, okay? So this happens to be a 23-day cycle, which is a little bit short according to my world. It's a little bit short cycle. And here's the opposite. This one is a long follicular phase, so this little egg is hanging out, hanging out, hanging out. I mean, what's happening in there, really? You know, is it, is it getting all dried up by then? <clears throat> I don't know. And then you have a really short luteal phase, which is not going to give enough time for the uterine wall lining to grow. This is a 31-day cycle, so it's a little more average cycle. What's this? We call this sawtooth, right? It's all over the place. It was a 41-day cycle. <clears throat> so what do you think? I always look at that and say maybe some polycystic ovarian syndrome where the, the gals are dobulating. And bottom line is that's an insulin-resistant um, environment. Too much sugar in the eggs, in that, that the eggs are under the influence of too much sugar. So we work with um, diet a lot. <clears throat> what else about that? Okay, so this is the definition of kind of a normal menstrual cycle. Three to four days of fresh blood, tampon every four hours, and of course we always encourage pads as much as possible because in Chinese medicine we look at the proper flow of qi and energy, right? And the flow of blood should be down and out rather than, you know, stopped. So as much as possible, <clears throat> um, not scanty but not flooding, should not be having a lot of cramps or clots, really. Always thought we had to be very sick during our periods, right? It's not true. And then your temp should be about 97.2 for that follicular phase. 
um, and then you ovulate around cycle day 14. You should notice um, fertile mucus. Some of my gals can, you know, actually see stretchiness. You want about two inches of stretchiness. Sometimes your libido will spike a little bit. So these are all things that you can look for, signs of ovulation. And you should have no pain during ovulation. Again, pain is always stagnation. That's, that's a blockage. That's not a free flow of what should be happening. Um, minimal PMS, no spotting for days before your period or breakthrough bleeding. 14-day um, luteal phase to give that uterine wall lining a really nice chance to get nice and thick and then temp it at 90, uh, about 98. So to optimize fertility, we just regulate the menstrual cycle. Okay, men, I promise to ask you a question, okay? How many of you guys get hot at night? You see this guy over here, she's all bundled up, right, in her blanket and her quilt, and the guy is like, oh, I'm so hot. Mm -hmm. This guy's got his feet outside the covers because he's so hot, he just can't get past it, right? So your doctor tells you when you're trying to get fertile, guys, right, no hot tubs, no smoking, wear boxers, you know, hang loose, that kind of thing. But what's happening here? There's some kind of internal heat right? So men are young. Men tend to be more young and, and hot, right? How many women go to bed and put your feet on your hubbies, right? Because you're cold. <clears throat> so this is an imbalance that I find a lot with guys. And tonight when you go home, look at your husband's tongue. If it's deep red, maybe it's peel, doesn't have much of a coat on, this is a sign of not enough yin, which is um, moisture or blood. And what happens is at night is yin, right? Day is yang, night is yin. So these, spe these specific patterns show up at the time where like yin is at its, its peak. And so that's why it happens at night. Some guys will notice that midday their cheeks get kind of red, maybe their ears feel red, right? These are all things that we work with. And your reproductive endocrinologist isn't gonna look at your tongue. Not that they're bad people. <laughs> Okay, I love these spines. Okay, Dr. Meg talked about sperm counts, motility, and morphology. Um, and men produce sperm seven, you know, 72 to 90 days um, and it matures. And so for guys, we like to work with you th for three months as well. Um, morphology is um, something that I'm seeing more and more as uh, the more I work is that the shape of the sperm is um, not normal. Sometimes they have like really weird heads that's not going to penetrate the egg and they might have two tails, you know. So what's causing that, right? So the environment, so sperm and eggs are cells. Every cell in your body is in the same environment, right? So what if you had the perfect little rock star seeds, the perfect little garden, just enough sun, just enough shade, just enough water, right? You're going to have better luck of of creating a family. Okay, <clears throat> so um, just a little bit of research is uh, in, in conjunction with ART or even reaching natural fertility potential acupuncture can really help. And there's a lot, a lot of research on that now. Um, it's a really great non-invasive method to try and um, to, to improve the sperm quality. There have been studies that have shown that um, acupuncture and herbs can help the motility in about six weeks, lots of those studies. Morphology is a little harder, but again, if we can create this healthy environment, every single sperm is going to be in a better place, right? This was a study that was done, um, published in this prestigious journal, Fertility and Sterility, <clears throat> where it talks about um, with acupuncture it increases the sperm production, increases the percent of healthy sperm improve sperm motility and improve the levels of hormones responsible. Again, guys, you have this feedback loop just like the girls do, and then increases the rate of pregnancy when used in conjunction with, um, with IVF or high-tech fertility. I love this. I love this little figure here because in Chinese medicine, we think that the heart and the uterus are totally connected. And in fact, in Western medicine, the muscle in the heart and the muscle in the uterus are the only two places in the body that have that specific kind of, of muscle fiber. I don't know how the Chinese figured it out. I don't know. Um, so healthy bodies are fertile bodies. Um, healthy roots create healthy branches. So if you have a tree that's dying in your backyard, 
You can go and cut the branches off, they're dead, the leaves are dead, but that's not going to make the tree healthy, right? You have to go to the root. What does it need? Maybe more water, maybe a little better fertilizer, right? And from the root up is going to create the health of that tree. <clears throat> so sometimes, especially in the case of um, unexplained fertility, you might just need a little boot, right? And so it's important to know that you have a lot of choices. And I think, I hope that that's why you're here is because you want to take a little bit of control and with knowledge, you can make better choices. Emotions play a huge role. So if the heart and the uterus get disconnected, I see a lot of disheartened moms, right? Trying to have a baby, a lot of disheartened women. So we try and connect that. Um, anger, resentment, and unfulfilled desires is the energy of the liver and that's the stress. So we work a lot with not just the physical, not just the um, systems of your organs, but also the emotional part. <clears throat> and this little guy is breached, so hopefully it's before 32 weeks and we can turn it with moxa. So how can you produce the golden egg? Acupuncture, herbs, lifestyle changes are key. Avoid toxins and xenohormones. If you just type in the dirty dozen, it's gonna show you the hormones, the, or the toxins that will um, cause hormone dysregulation. It's in our shampoo, it's in our lotion, it's, it's everywhere. It's, and so those that you can control, I want you to think about controlling. There are environmental ones that we just don't have control of. Um, supplements are key, herbs are key, stress reduction. Um, we have to somehow keep your emotions in check and that's the yoga, the meditation. In Chinese medicine we say qi follows the mind. So I tell my patients you have your brain, your body hears every thought you have so try and make it positive. Preconception care again for three months before you try and get pregnant. Um, couples who complete three months of preconception care um, have faster conception rates, decreased chances of miscarriage, and by the way, sperm is also involved with miscarriages. Women always blame themselves, but they've done studies on if it's not optimal sperm, that can cause a miscarriage too, especially in the early stage. Less morning sickness, fatigue during pregnancy, um, increased energy, better digestion, improved sleep, and decreased stress and anxiety. So optimize your health and enhance your fertility. This is just a study and the outcome was they studied they worked with couple with um, girls who women who had lifestyle changes, just dietary or whatever, and those who had acupuncture. And what they found was that those who conceived did so in half the time of their lifestyle only peers, meaning the acupuncture group got pregnant more quickly. So here's a gal who came to me um, to get pregnant, um, and I worked with her for a little while and was like, no, she just wasn't. So I sent her to Dr. Mag. He did a workup on her and found that she had really low ovarian reserve, okay? So she did IVF. This is her first baby. And then she came back for her second baby. Um, this is a cool story. This gal here came to me. Um, who knows what the AMH is? AMH is a test that the docs do to sort of um, evaluate your fertility um, reserve. And so she had a very, very low AM and H and her, her doctor had told her she had to have a donor egg. So she said, you know, I'm on a three month waiting list and I'll just come and see you because I know it's going to help. And she got pregnant. I had a photo shoot done, um, for my clinic and I invited her to come for the photo shoot and I gave her a couple treatments. And the next thing I know she's pregnant with this little girl. <laughs> okay. Okay, this gal here in the corner actually moved from Oregon to see Dr. Mag and I to have a baby. Okay, this is um, a, a truly miracle babies. So I'm not going to read the whole um, thing. You can read this online, but basically she came to me, was having miscarriage after miscarriage. I was trying to figure out what's going on with her. She was working with a, um, you know, an OB. And she came one day and said, they think I have a funny uterus. I said, well, what do you mean? She said, I don't know. I said, okay, we'll get the ultrasound because I used to be a rad tech, right? And so come to find out after a few treatments, maybe a month or month and a half, she walked in with this ultrasound. And this is what's called a bicornate uterus. That's why it's so important what Dr. Mag said is have everything checked out. It's basically one uterus with a septum down between, right? And so she had a baby in each side, right? 
So this was like a really high risk pregnancy and I was like, oh my gosh. So there are the twins. She carried them until almost 35 weeks. I think one day short of 35 weeks. She came and saw me for the first 12 weeks. I saw her once a week and then towards you know the end we saw her a little more frequently. And then she came to see me again with, oh God, quickly she got pregnant again. So this is her family. So miracles happen. And so my, my message to you is don't give up. Knowledge is power. I think it's so important. And I'm glad you're here to get knowledge with, to make better decisions. And we have a team that can help. So I always think that it's the combination of things, which we, we've talked about, is your health is like a combination lock. If you just keep putting in one number, you're probably not going to get the lock open. But if you do a combination of things, mind, body, acupuncture, yoga, whatever it is to calm things down, you do a lot better. Okay, done. How did I do? <laughs> 20 minutes?